Got my pen. Got my water. Got my dog. I think I'm ready to rumble. All right, guys. So the intention of this video, well, really the intention of these calls is because I really want to start narrowing down what I want my van build to include. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to talk to people that have done it. Today, I'm just chatting with Kylie, who spent some time living in a van. And this is for me to run some ideas off, run some ideas off of him? Run some ideas off of him. Why do I keep saying off of him? Okay, what I mean to say is I wanna bounce some of my ideas off of him. There are four main things that I'm initially worried about or that I just want to hone in before I start planning the build of my van. So electrical, do I want it and do I need it? The second thing is cooling basically for Aquila. I can handle a ton of heat, Aquila cannot. And then cooking, do I just want to use a Coleman stove? Or do I want to go the route of hooking up something a little bit bigger and getting like a 15 pound propane tank I don't know. And then the last thing is running water. Right now, I don't feel like I need running water. Hello. Hi, how are you? What are you up to? I'm, I'm currently looking through the woods for an arrow that I just shot off into it. Oh, nice. <laughs> do, you, do you want to find it before no, you talk? Okay. okay. The first thing is electrical stuff. Okay. I have to have some sort of charging thing available for my computer and my phone for work. So, you live in the desert currently. Right. Um, and something to be aware of is that you're going to get way more energy in the desert than you will other places. Yeah. For the most part, while the solar panels are expensive, the real expensive part is the batteries. Yeah. <laughs> and really, your stuff doesn't use that much energy. Um, have you looked at all into... Um, 12 volt AC systems as opposed to the big 256 or whatever volt. What do you mean? Well, sorry, DC. Stretch current. So basically, almost all of your, the things you would be using, like your phone and your computer, run on direct current. Um, and there's a loss in energy between switching them from direct current to alternating current, which is what's in your house. So one way to save money would be to, or save energy would be to run all of your things off direct current as opposed to alternating current. So for example, uh, you know how you plug in a little USB port into your car and it plugs directly into your phone? Yeah. Okay, so that's direct current in your car that runs on direct current. And then have you ever put that little plug-in thing into the wall and then touched it and felt how hot it got? Uh-huh. That's all wasted energy because it's transferring, it's changing energy from what's in your house into what your phone needs, which is actually direct current. So what's the best way of getting that in the van? Like, what well, well, I just cool have... The is, is that um, solar panels make direct current, and then you need to change into alternating current. Right. And so you would then, that, that would be your system, is to have a bunch of those little USB plugs to help you have significantly less need of energy, as long as you're only doing computer and phone, which are super low energy. So basically I can do this just with a way downsized, like, solar panel system? Correct, yes. If you go, like, low-energy stuff. Well, what's uh, high-energy stuff? High-energy stuff would be, like, anything that has a three-pong plug. Okay, um, I don't think I have anything you, that would yeah. do that. Like, if you're trying to run, like, a hot water heater, like a, like a tea kettle, um, if you were trying to run a blender, if you're trying to run tools, those sorts of things need a lot of energy to get them spun up and wound up, but, like, little electronics and things, super low-energy use. When you say that, though, I think about tools and, like, recharging drill batteries and stuff. I feel like that's probably right. going to be something that I need. Yep. And so before you get into, like, what do I need to use, like, should I use this or should I use this, figure out what you need. Okay. So that's, that's where you want to start. How much energy do you want to use? And then how do you figure out how to provide that usage as opposed to, like, what am I going to use to make energy? And then figure out what you can plug into it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> If that can be all low energy stuff, I can get away with a really small solar system yep. thing. And, and you can do one like one plug in for high energy stuff for alternating current things. Like you can do one AC adapter as opposed to your whole system being AC adapter, so you only use it if you plug in that one thing. 
So there, there are options, I guess is what I'm saying. So hypothetically, if I went the route of doing like mostly low current stuff with the one plug for, you know, the, the larger current, what what kind of like expenses do you... Off the top of my head, I want to say the batteries, if you get, we were going to shoot for two and I think they were like $400 a piece. Okay. And then the solar panels were probably another like five or $600. Um, and it depended on what you wanted to go because you can, you can get larger panels. Um, that are less expensive, but less efficient, or you can get smaller panels that are more efficient, but they don't take up as much space on the top of your, your van. Okay. It's super variable. And there may be some rules of thumb that Ham knows, and I don't know any rules of thumb, because in my opinion, it depends on what you're trying to do and how either sparse or lavishly you want to live. Right. Because you can even have systems, like, you can also connect it to your alternator, so whenever you drive, so by driving, you can charge your batteries, too. Right, I totally forgot about that. It's interesting because I, I foresee myself having periods of where I'm just, you know, driving for weeks, right. essentially, but there are also going to be times, like, when I come to see you guys that I'm just sitting for a month. Right, that, and that, so I, so the way I tend to design things is, like, utilitarian, right. so it's not really good at anything, but it's great at, like, <laughs> existing. <laughs> okay, well, that's good for for the electrical stuff. That gives me a lot that I can research in the meantime before I talk to Ham. So, thank you. That is extremely helpful. Did you guys talk about any, like, cooling system stuff? Because... We were going to go just full uh, vents and windows. Cool. Okay, that's what I'm leaning with a, towards. With an electric too. fan. So, I guess there would be an electric fan also. Um, I did look up a few different options for that, but it's, like, so... It's, it's a, that, that's another one of those big energy things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you could do something like you can make a some makeshift swamp coolers and stuff with fans, like by throwing wet wet towels or whatever over. But honestly, for the most part, for me, it didn't really being warm didn't really matter. Like if you set your solar panels, that they have an offset, so they're set off of. Mm. So instead of being directly on the roof, they're set off a few inches. That can create a lot of cooling just because you have like shade. Yeah. For the top of your van. Um, reflectors, insulation, all that kind of stuff can make a difference. The next thing is the cooking stuff. Okay. You know, the, the simple thing would just be like the Coleman two burner stove with the little propane screw and tank. And then yeah. I was thinking if I wanted to do something a little bit more comfortable, I could install like a stove top and use a large 15 pound propane with like a sealed container and whatnot. What are your thoughts? I like the small Coleman movable to burner stove because it provides you more counter space. You can actually move it if you want mm. to. So with the, with one of those smaller two burner stoves, like I can I can connect a larger propane tank to it. Yeah. Yep. You just need to buy the connectors. Cool. Really just depends on what you want, and then you can also move it outside if you want to, which I like as an like utilitarian. I like to move it outside and cook outside if I want. Yeah, I so. I totally agree with that. I think I'm pretty set with that. I'm not super interested in having like a fancy kitchen setup. I just need to be able yeah. to cook, and that's like it. Yeah. Okay, water. So originally I felt like just having blueies was gonna be fine, and I'd be very happy with just having blueies, and then some you know, sort of sink to collect gray water or whatever, but yeah. um, I know that there are simple options for a water pump. I just, I guess I don't feel the need for it, and what are your thoughts? So I would say water pump from Louis. Okay. It's not super expensive. It doesn't take a lot of energy. You can get foot pump ones. Siobhan and Gary used a foot pump, like, water system for a long period of time, and it did not seem to be a problem. But it's nice to be able to move water from someplace to someplace else without having to, like, carry it when you're tired and just want to do dishes and go to bed. That makes sense. Because the hope is that I can just install a lot of this myself and not yeah. pay people to do it. Do you have like other random stuff that you would suggest or different things that you... Yeah. Assuming you're going to be, you're not going to be in a place for a super, super long period of time and it's not your only vehicle, like you can run a fairly simple diesel heater from your gas tank actually okay so explain what that is um it's basically a small little heater that burns pumps gas from your your gas tank you're assuming you're running diesel and it basically heats up the cap it, it has a temperature sensor on it heats up to 68 degrees or whatever and then it turns off 
And how does that hook up to your gas tank? Um, you drill a hole into it. <laughs> Which isn't as dirty as you think it is. I mean, Ariel and I did winter fairly well in Vanabel in most places. Um, and it didn't get, like, we stayed fairly warm in what we had all the way down to like 20-ish degrees. Um, so it's up to you. And, but we also like big on blankets and that kind of stuff. And I don't mind being cold. Yeah. But if you also contemplate, like, if you're trying to work in your van... Right. And you're not going to be under, and you're like wearing mittens and typing socks. <laughs> <laughs> so after conversations with Kylie that you guys just saw, after talking with my friend Ham, who owns a professional build-out company in Flagstaff, and talking to a few other people in my family that have experience with this kind of stuff, I have narrowed in on what I want my van build to look like. Electrical. What I'm doing with electrical, I am going to go with a small solar setup. Enough to power the basics. So I'm not gonna go crazy here, but I do need power for my computer, my phone, and my camera. So I'm gonna go with two 100 watt solar panels. And I've been really looking into Renogy. Their products seem pretty great, and I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos that speak very highly of them as a company and their products. So as of right now, I'm looking into them. Cooling, I'm gonna go with vents and windows. So I'll mostly focus on airflow rather than having an actual cooling system. The cooling systems are extremely expensive. So any off-grid thing that you're looking at that is like a swamp cooler or an air conditioning unit, you need a lot of power and it's really expensive. If you have the budget, that's awesome. I do not. So I'm going to go with two vents, I believe, and I'm going to install windows in my van. Cooking. I am going to do a two burner stove that is removable. I'm not gonna have an inset stove um, because I do enjoy cooking outside and um, being able to move it around to create more space. So two burner stove hooked up to a 15 pound propane tank. That way I can you know, be out for a long period of time and not waste those tiny uh, screw in propane tanks that usually come with like a smaller uh, two burner Coleman stove. Water, I have decided as of right now that I wanna go with a foot pump. I've heard that although it's more work, you know, to be pumping your water, it, it does a great job kind of helping you not waste water. Um, if I'm doing this to help myself be more sustainable and leave less of a footprint, that seems like the route to go and I'm gonna be happy with it. So I'm gonna try to create a system uh, mostly with blueies because I'm familiar with blueies. I can store them easily and I can have many extras and it's just a swapping out method. And I do wanna make sure that I have a bunch of blueies for extra storage so that if I go on long trips, like two, three, four week trips, you know, out in the wilderness, I, I can just have that water. Heat, I'm not gonna do anything for heat. So I'm gonna rely on not being in super cold areas. And if I am back home in, in winter or, you know, in Canada when it's really cold, I'm just going to rely on our super solid high quality gear for that. And one of those things being my negative 40 sleeping bag that Akil and I have shared in some pretty cold weather. Um, I'm very much a, a, a quality over quantity type person. So that stuff's super important to me. And I think that we're gonna be able to do fine. We as in Akil and I, with just having high quality gear to keep us nice and warm. Last thing, bathroom. So this is something that uh, stumps a lot of people. And for me, I'm going to be saving up for a composting toilet. I do not feel comfortable using a chemical toilet. Um, right now I'm kind of working through this journey in my life to, to purge myself in my life of things with a lot of chemicals in it. And that would be a, a lot of chemicals in a very small space that I would be living in. So while I save up for a composting toilet, because they're pretty expensive, like almost $1,000, I'll be utilizing the wilderness and digging holes, then coming into town and using businesses that I'm at or whatever to go to the bathroom. If you are unfamiliar with going to the bathroom in the wilderness, it's super easy to find a spot, dig a hole for L&T purposes, that means leave no trace. You dig a hole away from water sources and it's actually quite nice. And then you bury it and that's it. You have great views. Nobody's bothering you. It's really nice. 
um, I'll have an emergency bucket because I know that there are times where people will get in a pinch where they have to go and they're in a city and nothing's open or whatever. Other than that, I'll, I'm planning on being in the wilderness mostly. I hope that some of those conversations has helped you figure out, you know, if you're doing the van stuff, figure out what do you want in your van. And I would say the, the biggest thing for me was figuring out what I am comfortable with. Maybe other people need more or they need less. So figure out what that is for you and then you can kind of work off of what that looks like. My goal is to stay within my budget, which isn't a lot, but still be comfortable enough in my van that I want to live in it for a long period of time across many different seasons and hopefully many different places. I hope that helps and I'm super excited to get into the van build and I'm really happy that I have a good idea going into it so I can get my van and figure out all of the dimensions and exactly how I want the build to fit together. Now I just need to go get myself a van. <laughs>